With a week left in August, the S&P 500 is tracking for its worst month of the year. Join us now with a look at a technical look at the markets. Jason Hunter, J.P. Morgan's head of global fixed income and U.S. Uh, equity technical strategy. How much of the was there any um, too much optimism built up going from the October lows to where we were in June and July, Jason? Did that need to be worked off, and has it happened? Well, yeah, we originally thought 4,200 would be a ceiling for the S&P, and that was the case uh, for the better part of the first half of the year, up until the economic data started to beat expectations, of, let's call it from May through August. And what you saw was a position squeeze. People actually got quite pessimistic and, and uh, underpositioned uh, by the time you got into early May. And that 400-point squeeze, you know, I think did make things a bit too optimistic. You didn't see sentiment measures really get uh, into the nosebleed section, but things got fairly optimistic for where we are within a late cycle environment. Um, and we think now the tide is turning. You know, so we stepped off of our bearish view with the move above 4,200, but as the market started to roll over again from channel resistance at 4,600, some of our technical signals started to trigger at that point, pattern-based signals. Um, so we are bearish going into the, uh, the fall period now. Yeah, you are. Okay. And I was wondering what other um, technical bells are, are ringing. I saw the NASDAQ breath was like the worst in history or something. Are there 50-day moving averages that are being breached? What, what other things are telling you uh, that, that are notable <clears throat> that you don't see all the time that might indicate a trend? Well, I, I mean, if we take a big step back and we look at some of the, the broader cross-market signals, the yield curve has been inverted uh, for the better part of a year and a half now. Um, historically, if you go back to the early 1970s and look at the timing of these cycles, um, generally between 19 and 24 months after the curve inverts, you see your cycle peak in equity markets that then transition into an economic contraction. As we go into the fourth quarter, uh, you're about to roll into that window of time from the yield curve inverting, you know, the, the, right. the time ago that it did. Uh, on top of that, from a, a, just a, a yearly cyclical perspective, you look at seasonality. Um, you know, it's well known September and early October are not a good time to be in risky markets. Um, so we put that together with the high frequency pattern signaling that we talked about already from 4600. Hey, Jason. It, yeah. So if all of this is the case, does that mean you should just be out of the market through through the end of the year? Um, at the very least for right now, yes, the pendulum looks like it's going to swing back in, in the really? bearish direction. So you'd sell or you'd just sell not buy? Or just not, that's what we're trying to figure out. You'd sell, not buy. You'd buy defensive stuff. What would you be doing? So given where we are in the cycle, um, you know, I'm, on, I'm on the, of the view that you should be underweight and, and even short if you're a leveraged investor or trader right now. Um, until we see signs of, of a bottom, if the market does pull back like we think, now that could be 4,200, that could be 3,800, it could be a retest of the lows at, at, at 3,500. Until we see signs of that bottom, um, I would stay out of the market and, and in the defensive posture right now.